shoot with that, I think we about have a finished painting. It's that easy. Let's take a little bit of the paint thinner. A little bit. Hey. Welcome back to my bed stream. Although you probably haven't seen the evil one, but hey ho. Um, so, I just thought I'd have a go at finishing my Bob Ross painting, really. So, try and roll that. I've been enjoying this game, Vermillion. It's basically a painting game. Everyone calls it a Bob Ross simulator. It, it is wonderful. Um, I really enjoy it. Oh, what that for? No. Oh wow, yeah, fun. that's clever. There we go, learn something new. I'll touch to. Uh, I like it. There you go, learn something new. So these bars, what you see, you can attach things to it. There's one up there as well, look. Um, anyway, so I've been following along with this Bob, Bob Ross tutorial. Um, I watched a Bob Ross documentary a few weeks back. Not that I'm a painter or anything like that. This is this is my second attempt at a Bob Ross tutorial here. Um, I'm not I'm not a very good painter. Oh no, this isn't my second attempt. That's my first attempt, which I preferred. So let me show you my second attempt. So I watch. I'll start again. Hello, welcome to my stream. If you're watching this on YouTube, this is a recording. So, I've been following along with this Bob Ross, I'm real calm now like Bob Ross, forget about the first part. I've been following along with this Bob Ross tutorial, um, and basically a few weeks back I watched the Bob Ross documentary, and he paints everything three times. So, uh, the first time is just his practice go, the second time he tries to put a bit more detail in, the third time is he's like really good, he spends a lot of time doing it. Um, but the one which we seen painting is the second one. And I'm not sure what happens with the third one. I think it's used for like maybe this background image or something. But basically his third one didn't really ever get seen. So I've attempted to follow the same thing. So I've done this Bob Chip Ross tutorial two times now. Um, twice. Um, this is the first attempt. Um, I just followed along with a video. Just I, I paused it and went back a few times. But I just tried to follow along at a normal speed. And then the second attempt, I kind of, because I already had an idea of what I was doing, I still followed along, but I tried to add my own style in it. To be honest, it looks a little bit pants, but it hurt. Um, I think that's my second one. So this was my second one. Um, I don't know. I suppose it's not too bad. I didn't like the trees, if I'm honest. I thought I went to trees were a little bit pants compared to the first one. Um, I tried to get reflections a little bit. Um, the first time I left this tree as like an island um, but this time I did half like what Bob Ross does in the tutorial. Um, I don't know, it's kind of alright. I preferred the sky in the old one. The old the sky in the old one was much much better. Um, but I like the layering on this. Um, I much prefer that. Um, so basically that was my first attempt, and this was my second attempt. So I'll just go back to the first one again just to show you. Um, so that's my second one. Um, let's do a little closer look. I, I, I did a, a video like after this, which was me learning a few different like brush techniques and stuff. I know there's been an update since then, and so I was watching my son play this game, and um, the oils seem much thicker now, the paints which seem, which seem much thicker, so we'll see how we'll get along with it. But um, this was my second attempt, and I don't know, I think I always just spoil it on the trees a little bit. Um, but anyway, so let me go back to the first one, this one. Go so back to my first one, sky's much nicer, blending's much nicer. I think on my second one I tried doing too much. Whereas this one, I just left it really, really simple. And I think I like this one. The trees, again, are terrible. I didn't get any reflections whatsoever because the water terrified me. 
and this one I kind of again the path scared me a little bit so I just cheated and made it into a little island which looks nice but this is my first one I think I prefer the first one um, in all honesty but anyway let's uh, back to here start a new painting Ta-da! new um, I'm just going to check, I'm going to start the video, but I'm not going to start the tutorial yet, I just want to... 24 inch, double prime, pre-stretched canvas, across the screen right there, that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me tell you what I've got going up here. Today I'm using an 18 by 20... 18 by 24, but he's got his sideways, I didn't realise it last time. 18 by 24, Okay. Okay, go with that. Right, so as I say, I've watched this a couple of times now, so and it, it goes pretty fast, a little bit fast for me if I'm honest. But I know I know the first thing what it does. So what I'm gonna do is just cheat a little bit and um, just do my whitewash because I know that's what's coming. So you see, always starts with a water a water wash to start off with. Um, this is. When I when I was playing it the first few times, I've only I've only played this game a few times, um, and the first few times that I painted it, I can't remember it doing this, like the the thick the thickness. Um, I only noticed it doing this when my lad was playing it yesterday, but as I say, it, it, there was an update yesterday, so I wonder if it came up as part of the update. Should maybe read the release notes really this, this is called a uh, uh, think called not the white you don't call it a whitewash we'll get to it in a minute when we play the video I don't remember white somewhere. Right, so this is what it starts with. It starts with a white base. Um, so I'm just gonna I've just cheated a little bit. What I'm gonna do is because this is my third time, so in reality this is my third final attempt on this painting before I move to on to my next one. Um, so I'm gonna take my time on this and um, just play a little bit of a video. Obviously it's a 25 minute video. I'm expecting this to take me a couple of hours or something. Uh, I might not do it all in one vid in one stream, I might do a couple of streams to make it look good. Um, but basically I'm going to play a bit of a video, get to the stage where I'm happy with it, play the next bit, get to that stage, blah 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 blah. So. 24 inch, double prime, pre-stretched canvas, but you use whatever size you'd like. And I've just covered the entire canvas with a very thin coat of liquid white. The liquid white is designed just to make the canvas wet and, and to make it slick. It allows us to actually blend color right here on the canvas. Makes your whole painting life a lot easier. So let's get started. I thought today we'd just do a very simple little scene that I hope you'll enjoy. Let's start with a little two inch brush and a touch of the alizarin crimson. And we just load a little bit right into the bristles. Pull a little paint out, tap the bristles firmly to assure a nice even distribution of paint all the way through the bristles. And let's go right up here. We'll take this old brush and just making little X's, little crisscross strokes. We'll just very quickly drop in just a little warm part in the sky here. Maybe we'll have a little pink in the sky. I sort of like that. And in our world, we can do anything that we want to do here. Any old thing. There. Doesn't take too long when you're using a brush that's two inches wide. Oh, okay, without even cleaning the brush. We'll go right into, right into the little thalo blue. <laughs> I like thalo blue. It's a very warm blue. Very nice. Once again, just tap a little color into it. And let's go back up here. And still using it. Right, so straight away, obviously, you can. I need to get blended in a little bit more. So I'm just going to use a... kind of feel like I use too much paint. I'm going to use a bit of this and just kind of try and blend it a little bit. I, 
I, I know we're, we're going to um, go over it all with some blue and add some more colours in there. But as I say, I just want to um, take my time on this one and put a little bit more pink in this area, a bit of night, a bit brighter. Yeah, seem the was the blending seems to be a little bit different since uh be a bit not worse, it's different. I didn't used to be able to get the lines across, which is I can now, so that's good obviously. And we just react to blending in a little bit, it seems to be a little bit different. But see this is where I know I'm doing too much. I'm doing too much right now. I should be leaving it alone. I should be saying, right, add some blue, move on, add some blue. I know I'm going to add blue at the top, I know I'm going to add blue at the bottom. this white and just I don't know obviously I've been quite far down here and that's fine mm. use some of this white to blend it back Isn't yeah, little crisscross strokes, X's. No, crimson blue. They are, little X's. So it didn't clean his we'll brush first, so we've we'll got a bit of problem there. So. Something about like so. Then we'll come back we'll and we'll clean the blue. brush and blend that together. Now the blue is many, many times stronger than this little pink area. It'll just eat it up, so be careful. Be careful. All go away. If you want to make the indication of a happy little cloud, all you do is just sort of tap. The little stringy cloud just moves right there in the brush. And that easy. Good blending out. Have a little string of the cloud. There. Let's see. Oh, we have that on there? Let's have some water in this painting. I love water. Right, and so it is moving on to the water. Whoop. So, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm not really after what I've got here. Good. Happy little mistake, we can add a little bit more blue in there really, it's just a bit lighter. Uh, happy with that, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to just try and... Um, blend it in a little bit more now, a bit more delicately. Uh. So you can get, obviously I was just going a bit bit mental earlier but sorry a bit rough but um now I'm just going a bit more gentle and still trying to get the crisscross motion but um trying to like blend it a bit more Um, should maybe add a little bit, a little bit of blue to this area like this, and bring that down a bit here. Yeah. Oops. Oops. Like he did, I'm just going to bring a little bit of blue down here like this.
Um, you see, now I'm just um, I can I'm just trying to like blend things in a little bit, trying to get a little bit of shape now to my clouds and stuff. Uh, I've done this quite low because I kind of know this is going to get bloody covered anyway, but yeah, how it's done now. Try and blend this in a little bit. Again, I know this is going to be water. Oops. Oops zoom in. It's all about layering, it's all about layering it. I know this is all the background, but if we make it look nice when it gets covered, I kind of feel it'll still look nice. There we go, I'm happy with where we are. This style. Still water is always level. And I think today we'll have still water, so pull from the outside in. Outside in. Something about like so. All right. I'll have a little brush going. I want to darken the corners a little bit. I'm going to take a little Prussian blue and just add in the corners here and there. A little bit up there. And we'll go over to the other side. And add a little more and then down to the bottom. A couple of mistakes right we'll there. Down here too. I'm just putting a little Prussian blue in each corner to darken it. And then the most fun part of this whole technique is washing the brushes. Since these are oil paints, we're washing our brushes with odorless paint thinner. Shake off the excess and, <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. That's really the most fun part of it. Now, with a clean brush, and it's relatively dry from just beating it, we'll start in the light area, which is the pink, and we'll blend it all together. Something about like so. He gets the dark blue there when he gets a bit of darkness into the corners. I mean, this is this is again where I struggle because well not where I struggle, this is where I'm noticing the differences. Just the paint's laying really, really thick. It's difficult to like blend as such. No, I shouldn't be blending at this point. But I feel I need to be super thick. Some kind of ladder and get right away. Kind of a so that's all there is to it. Yeah, kind of already done this bit. Thing. But it's that easy, that easy. What's so fantastic about this is that anybody, anybody can put a little masterpiece on canvas with just a little bit of practice, a vision in your mind, and off you go. All right, that's working so well. Hmm. Take a little white, a little bit of the blue. Hold up there, hold up there, Bob. I'll go in, I just want to blend it, so that's what I'm doing, mate. I don't really want to lose I like the edges on my clouds, so I don't really want to lose them that much. So I'm just going to try and like go carefully around here. I mean, I've got a bit of jagged edges. Trying to smooth. Nice. Yeah. And here, I don't really want to like that like puffiness. Uh, yeah. that dark area there. Good. 
We're good. We're good. Lighter area. Right, so I've kind of made a mess of my board a little bit. Don't really want to reset my board. We've got some blue here. White and Grab a little more of the titanium white. I want to make a light blue color here, mostly phthalo blue. And let's just tap a little color into the bristles. This little two inch brush will do marvelous things. Watch here, watch here, watch here. We'll have to reset. It's fun. Just take the corner of the brush and just pull down. Something about like so. Straight down, straight down. I want to make it look like little distant trees, with far back in the distance. A little more color. And we'll just have it. There you go. I don't know. Right there. In your world, you create any illusion that you want. There. But I want to keep the bottom light so it looks like mist. You could even take another two inch brush, and I have several, and tap it. Really get in there and tap it, and then lift upward. It'll help create that illusion of mist right down at the bottom. And sometimes, sometimes it's a lot of fun put several layers. It helps create depth in your painting. And for that, we'll add a little more blue, but we make it a little darker. Add a little bit of Prussian blue to it and make it a little darker, but the same thing. And we'll come back, and let's put another little layer in here. Just touching and pulling downward. That's all we're doing. That's really all we're doing. Something about like that. I don't know what this one. And we don't know where that goes. It's all the point. Mist. You, you could even take light. And put a little masterpiece on canvas with just a little bit of practice, a vision in your mind. I'm going to be naughty here. Uh, I'm going to be right. naughty. That's working so well. Hmm. Take a little white. Sorry, Bob. I thought mistakes happened. I didn't like where we were. People ask me every 24 inch double. Pr and it's very easy to paint in this style. Still water is always level. And I think today we'll have still water. So pull from the outside in. Outside in. Something about like so. All right. I have a little brush going. I want to darken the corners a little bit. I'm going to take a little Prussian blue and just add in the corners here and there. A little bit up there. And we'll go over to the other side and add a little more and then down to the bottom. We'll put a little down here too. I'm just putting a little Prussian blue in each corner to darken it. And then the most fun part of this whole technique is washing the brushes. Since these are oil paints, we're washing our brushes with odorless paint thinner. Shake off the excess and, <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. That's really the most fun part of it. Now, with a clean brush, and it's relatively dry from just beating it, we'll start in the light area, which is the pink, and we'll blend it all together. Something about like so. That's all there is to it. Okay, and down here, we'll just do the same thing. There. But it's that easy, that easy. What's so fantastic about this is that anybody, anybody can put a little masterpiece on canvas with just a little bit of practice, a vision in your mind, and off you go. All right, that's working so well. Hmm. Take a little white, a little bit of the blue. I'll grab a little more of the titanium white. I want to make a light blue color here, mostly phthalo blue. And let's just tap a little color into the bristles. This little two-inch brush will do marvelous things. Watch here, watch here, watch here. It's fun. Just take the corner of the brush and just pull down. Something about like so. Straight down, straight down. I'll make it look like little distant trees live far back in the distance. A little more color, and we'll just have it. There you go. I don't know. Right there. In your world, you create any illusion that you want. Okay, what are we with?
fact how we do with it so, so that's what's changed you can load much more up now so get that But he thinks so, buddy. It's not bloody thick. My light area, but uh, uh, is what I'm trying to buddy get some of his paint off here. It's not helping when I'm trying to steal my trees. It's just it, the blues is coming through too much. Well, I think, sorry. Sorry, I'm being a bit quiet. I'm just trying to get this bit right. Uh, I always get a bit stuck on this bit. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'll tell you what, I'm going to try a different brush for a sec. But um, let's try this one. Oh, yes, I did. I'll use this brush. Got all these brushes that obviously Bob Ross only ever seems to use one brush, so you, you, you follow with what he's doing, but got all these other bit better. Well, in my opinion, it is anyway. I don't know what I want it. So, this will obviously spread out a little bit in a minute. No, this is the light colour, but I'm trying to get slightly light. Then this will all spread in a minute when I am. Um, I think. Anyway, I hope. Like the, the bottom. 
have a look for a bit of this. Okay, so what do we know about? There, but I want to keep the bottom light so it looks mm. like mist. You could even take another two inch brush, and I have several, and tap it. Really get in there and tap it, and then lift upward. It'll help create that illusion of mist right down at the bottom. And sometimes, sometimes it's a lot of fun put several layers. It helps create depth in your painting. And for that, we'll add a little more blue, but we make it a little darker. Add a little bit of Prussian blue to it and make it a little darker, but the same thing. And we'll come back and let's put another little layer in here. Just touching and pulling downward. That's all we're doing. That's really all we're doing. Something about my cat. There. And we don't know where that goes. It doesn't matter at this point. And back to our other two inch brush, and we'll tap this. I want to create a mist again. Notice this separation. It's caused because of the difference in color, difference in value. And that misty area turns out to be your very best friend. Take care of it, treasure it. There. Okay, let's have some more fun. Hmm. Let's see, let's take some black, some Prussian blue. Trying again. Not gonna go too mad, but just wonder what a bit of this um, mystical little back in.
trying to get the mist kind of effect, but apologies if I go quiet, obviously it's a painting program so people concentrate. People. I try and concentrate. It's not that there's anyone watching, I ain't heard any kind of boops or anything, so... Uh -huh. Right, um... I'm gonna just use this brush and um, try and just... Not straighten the edges, but just bring this down, get some more land. Get a Okay, okay, okay. And a little phthalo blue, it doesn't matter. We just throw it on there. Crimson too. What the heck? Be brave. Be brave. I'll put a little sap green in there too. It's getting close enough. We should begin seeing some color. A little bit of white. So Don't want it totally dark yet. To... There. Perfect. Okay, let me wipe the old knife off. And let's get us a mm, fan brush. We use a fan brush. Load it full of color. Both sides. Both sides. Okay, let's go up in here. Right, so he's, he's doing his background. I know I don't need to, I don't need to, but he's doing his background to go as much further across low. So I think I'm just going to go back and do that. Especially now that I've got this brush and I've kind of worked out, although I have just bloody got rid of all my colours, but a bit more lighter. Don't need to be prepared. I'm going to bring it around here like this. Thing. I'm just going to um, can use a little bit of this pink and just brighten this area on here so it's got like some of the flowers again. Well, not flowers, but you know what. You know what I mean. This is a nice little brush anyway. Again, this is one which I don't use very often. Actually, all you that was put in the button. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Just, um, just add a little bit more detail using this one to here. So that we can see that edge.
See this area's gonna get covered up anyway, there'll be all trees here. Um that's that's um some reason to please with all we're going so far. Right, so I don't know what he's gonna do with a bloody trees. This is a bit what terrifies me, to be honest. Well, let's go back to his closet. I'll put a little sap green in there too. It's getting close enough, we should begin seeing some color. Sap green. A little bit of white. Don't want it totally dark yet. There. Oh. Perfect. Let me wipe the old knife off. And let's get us a mm, fan brush. We'll use a fan brush. Load it full of color. Both sides. Both sides. Okay, let's go up in here. Now maybe in our world, there lives, it does now, some little trees back in here. Now these are a little closer. You're seeing a little more detail, a little more distinct. There. And we just drop them out. We don't know where they go. Wherever you want. That's exactly, exactly where they should live. Don't put too much detail in here. It's too far away. You're not going to see a lot of detail. You see detail when it's very close to you. When things are far away, you make out form, shape, basic color. That's all. Save your detail to the foreground. The lack of detail helps also create that illusion of distance and depth in your painting. It's very, very important. Very important. Okay. I'm going to tap a little of that. That'll help create that illusion of mist down there, too. There, lift slightly up, lightly, just a little bit, see? Now then, you know, when I was a traditional painter, one of the hardest things to make effectively was reflections. Watch how easy, I'll take some of this. Whoa, 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 Bob Ross, ain't ready yet. Oh, so he has gone quite far across anyway, so let's just do some. I mean, let's look down here a little bit. Yeah. I think it's this one what I need to build the top in a minute. I mean, it didn't really mystify it, but... Yeah. It's alright, I'm going to need, I think I need a little bit more light room there though. So I'm just trying to add the mist effect. Sorry, I've been really quiet, I know. It's going to be the most boring stream ever. So let me give you a little snapshot where I am for anyone who's just, if there's anyone, not that for anyone is watching. So, Bob Ross, Vermilion, Virtual Painting, fantastic. I've been following this tutorial. Uh, Bob Ross paints everything three times. He paints uh, an image once. He then does it twice for the tutorial, what you watch here, when he paints it a third time. So this is the third time I've painted this image. 
Um, so uh, I'm new to this program, completely new to this program. It's only been like the third or fourth time I've used it. Um, but basically, I'm trying to follow along with this uh, Bob Ross um, tutorial. So, I mean, obviously, it's different, but hey ho, it is what it is. So, here we are. This is what we're up to at this moment in time. I've just noticed some dark areas in the top here, so I think I'm just going to like mix a bit more dark colour up here. Just, uh, just on the edges, just like here. I mean, this could be like a fatal mistake here, but. I noticed that um, the paint's different since the last update. Well, I think it is anyway. It certainly seems different. Nicer because you've got more options with it, but it seems to bloody lay so thick now. But it's good, it's good. Oh, look, this is, my mis this is where it goes with the tongue here. A bit of this light will pull back up. Have little accidents, don't worry, have little accidents. So uh, I'm gonna light your colour back up. Just want a bit of darker at the top, but the and made it a little blend it in a little bit, just try and hide my half little accident. Now this was quite a good blending brush anyway, let's use that. So I'm just trying to get the clouds to just blend in a little bit, I just wanted it to be a bit darker towards the top. But I mean I've got a little bit darker I think. A bit nicer, but I don't really want to look too much to it. So I'm about a quarter of the way through. I don't know how long I've been streaming for. Carry on playing now. Same color. We'll take a two-inch brush touch and pull down. Just pull straight down. It's most important that it goes straight down. Something like so. Straight down. See, this is where it gets a bit terrifying because whenever I've done this, it's like there's so much ink on the pen. It's unreal. In common paint, paint on the brush, so uh, straight down like this. Them reflections light up. Try and do. Down. Because of the noise. Going very lightly go across. There. And instantly we have some nice reflections. Uh, That's simple. Yeah. Uh, right. Now here's something that's right. funny. Take a little, I just use a little white. If you want to create another plane in your painting. Take a little white and lift upward. And it'll make little areas back here that looks like a whole different plane and the white will end up looking like little trunks in those trees. There, and easy. Let's put a little water line. For that we'll use a liquid white. Pull it out very flat, flat as you can get it. Cut across. Let's okay. be good reflections. That's simple. Now here's something that's funny. Take a little, I just use a little white. If you want to create another plane in your painting, okay. take a little white and lift upward and it'll make little areas back here that looks like a whole different plane and the white will end up looking like little trunks in those trees there and easy let's put a little water line for that we'll use a liquid white pull it out very flat flat as you can get it cut across okay and we can go right up in here 
And we can just drop in just, just a little water rat. Right. Just a happy little water rat lives back oh, there right, somewhere. Okay, okay. We don't know where it is. Don't know that we even care. Just let your imagination take you anywhere you want to go. A lot of times I start a painting and have nothing in mind but the time of day and the time of year. <laughs> and from that, you can paint some fantastic little scenes. Don't worry about it. You don't always have to have a perfect vision in your mind of what it is you're going to paint. Imagination is, it's, it's like any other muscle in your body, or like a muscle in your Ooh. body. The more you practice, Whoops, it the easy. It Take some black, Prussian blue. I'm gonna put some phthalo green in there. I like phthalo green. All right, Bob, green. just one second, Bob. I get what you're doing, but Give me a second there, pal. But oh. am huh? no control of the man, man. Straight across. I'll tell you what I'm gonna stick this colour just on the air. Uh, um. Got very flat, flat as you can get it. Cut across, okay? And we can go right up in here. And we can just drop in Jesus. just a little water line. Just Happy little water man lives back in here somewhere. Don't, like the way just know it it Don't know that we even care. Just let your imagination take you anywhere you want to go. A lot of times I start a painting and have nothing in mind but the time of day and the time of year. And from that, you can paint some fantastic little scenes. Don't worry about it. You don't always have to have a perfect vision in your mind of what it is you're going to paint. Imagination is... It's, it's like any other muscle in your body, or like a muscle in your body. The more you practice, the better it becomes. Take some black, Prussian blue. I want to put some phthalo green in there. I like phthalo green. Maybe a little crimson. There we go. All right, let me wipe off the knife. I just wiped the knife on a little, little old paper towel. I would just use that brush, a little fan brush. Load some color into it, both sides of the brush. Both sides, let's go up in here. Let's have, hmm, let's have a little evergreen tree. He lives right there. See? Just make a line, take the corner of the brush, make a touch. Make another one, and just sort of work from the center out. There it goes. It's easier to do them fast than it is slow, though. Here they come. Just sort of back and forth. I had a lady in class one time tell me, it was like making Z's, the letter Z. She called them Z trees. So I guess that's as good of an analogy as any. From the center out. The center of the tree should be the thickest, darkest, strongest part of the tree. Because you have leaves on the back, you have a trunk in the middle, and you have leaves on this side. I have one more in there. There we go. I have a little family of trees. You know, if you've painted with me before, I think everybody should have a friend, even a tree. Even a tree needs a friend. Now, if you want to reflect those, just pop in some general indications of where they are.
no big deal. Because we don't make mistakes here. We have happy accidents. Very quickly, you learn to work with anything that happens. Take the big brush, pull down, straight down once again, and then go across. And we have instant reflections. I just use that same thing. I'll do what? I was going to reload it then, but I'll just try again. I didn't go down when he said go down. So he said. Oh. Do, do, do. Go down, go down, go down. You know what? I don't even bother, I'll do. It's so annoying. I just kind of want it to be a bit more like. A couple of mistakes that I'm going to do, I'm going to bring this out, very good. Sorry, Bob, I did what I shouldn't have done. I don't get why it smudges so bad. Right, so let's head, first of all, let's just do a bit more, more tree detail. It does have quite a lot of detail. Thank you for watching, if anyone is watching, if you're not watching, why aren't you watching, like and subscribe, um, do some do some things, super chat, do I need to say super chat every now and often, every so often, thank you for the super chat, I don't know what that means, but thank you for it, no I haven't got it, but See what's happening there. Oops. Oops. Take some black Prussian blue. I want to put some phthalo green in there. Try this like one. Phthalo green. Maybe a little crimson. There we go. All right. Let me wipe off the knife. You know what? I just wiped the knife on a little, little old paper towel. That'll do. I would just use <laughs> this a brush. A little fan brush. Load some color into it. Both sides of the brush. Both sides. Let's go up here. Yeah, there. so that'll do. Let's have. Them. Let's have a little evergreen tree. He lives right there. See? Just make a line, take the corner of the brush, make a touch. Make another one. And just sort of work from the center out. 
There it goes. It's easier to do them fast than it is slow, though. Here they come. Just sort of back and forth. I had a lady in class one time tell me it was like making Z's, the letter Z. She called them Z trees. So I guess that's as good of an analogy as any. From the center out. The center of the tree should be the thickest, darkest, strongest part of the tree. Because you have leaves on the back, you have a trunk in the middle, and you have leaves on this side. We'll have one more here. There we go. I have a little family of trees. You know, if you've painted with me before, I think everybody should have a friend. Even a tree. Even a tree needs a friend. Now, if you want to reflect those, just pop in some general indications of where they are. No big deal. See? Because we don't make mistakes here. We have happy accidents. Very quickly, you learn to work with anything that happens. Take the big brush, pull down, straight down once again, and then go across. And we have instant reflections. I just use that same fan brush. It has that color we made the tree out of it. I go through cad yellow and a little yellow ochre. Immediately we have green. There we are. Let's go up in here. And we can take that green. Let's go back. And put some highlights on our little evergreen trees. There they go. All right, this little tree here. He's saying, don't leave me out. I need some too. There we are. There we are. There we are. All right. Now, I'm put a little liquid white right on that same brush because I want to lighten the color and make it a little thinner. A thin paint will stick to a thick paint. We mix them back up again. Let's go back up here. And we can just take this brush and let's just pop in the indication of some little bushes that live down here, right down in his little foots. Something about like that. How's that? That looks like a little island. Let's put some dirt there. Let's take some white, a little dark sienna, mix them together, cut off a little roll of paint. Let's go up in here. And we'll take this, and we'll just put the indication here of a little bit of soil, some dirt, some kind. Got to have a place if this is a little island for all this to sit on. All right. Mm -hmm. All there is to it. Okay. All right, we got to figure out something to do on the other side now. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. You know, if you've painted with me before, I like I like old big trees. Let's take a little bit of that color right there. Let's go right up in here. This is your bravery test. Take the corner of the old two inch brush and let's just begin laying in a basic shape here. Oh, tree lives right there. Right there. Big old tree. But he's a nice tree. There he is. All right, while well, I got that brush going, tell you what, maybe let's do something about like this. We just tap in all kinds of little little bushy looking areas. River test. You have to decide what lives here, how far it goes, how tall is it, how short oh, is it. That's the, uh... In between. Oh, Uh, maybe a bit more confident with this brush actually.
this is your bravery test. Take the corner of the old two inch brush and let's just begin laying in a basic shape here. Tree it loose, right there. Right there. Big old tree. But he's a nice tree. There he is. Alright, while I got that brush going, what maybe let's do something about like this. And we just tap in all kinds of little little bushy looking areas. You have to decide what lives here, how far it goes, how tall is it, how short is it, fat, skinny, in between. It's your world. And in your world, you make all the decisions. All the decisions. There we are. See, we're just putting some dark in here, so later on, our light color will show. We'll just grab a, there's a, whoops, grab a metal. There's a fan brush right there. Take a little white, yeah, a little bit of the dark sienna. Just want to make the indication here, maybe a little tree trunk, maybe a little more dark sienna. That's nice. Okay. Right here. Don't that brush. I think this is my favorite brush now. Just want some indications. I'm going to put some happy little leaves in there, so we're going to cover most of them. Most of them won't show. We'll go right into that. Get a little sap green, get a bit of the yellow. We'll just put it right on this two inch brush. Give it, there it goes. Whoops. Okay, so. I kind of feel like I've, I've ruined the tree a little bit. Do I risk putting some blue? No. It is what it is, and it ain't what it ain't. We've got what we've got. I don't know if I need to have a little rest, if I'm honest. I'm quite happy where we are. I'm not happy with this green thing here, but I'm happy with where we are for the other stuff. I know we're going to add some more trees. Oh, excuse me. I'll tell you what, I'm going to just start adding a tree here just to see if I can cover up. I'm going to undo that tree, what I'm going to do, I'm quite happy with what I've got, I'm going to end this stream there, and I'm going to come back to this a little bit later, because there's no point in plowing on ahead and screwing with it, um, so yeah, there we go, here we are so far, I've got my little island with some trees in, quite happy with that, I've got a nice background, some trees in the background, oh, we'll do a hand, 
nice background setting. I like the sky this time, it's much nicer. Trees, my reflections alright, I suppose. I need a bit more practice for my reflections. The next thing is I'm going to add the big tree here and the landmass, um, but I think just for now I'm going to call it there and have a little bit of a rest. So thank you for watching my stream if you watched it, or if you watched it back on YouTube, thank you for that. And um, see you next time.